I, I started my career in fashion PR, and uh, I quit that job because I wasn't feeling very fulfilled. And I went to go work with a human rights organization, and uh, I was advocating for women's rights, and I had this beautiful opportunity to travel all over the world. Um, I got to South America, I got over to Europe, um, I was working throughout the United States and really pushing for people's rights. And it was a great opportunity and I, I felt at a certain point like there was still something missing, you know, like I felt like my donut hole was, was lacking of sorts. And, um, and in meeting the people, well, all over the world, um, my contract had then come to an end, and I went back to New York City, and uh, they had offered me a permanent position in New York. And I said, that's an enormous decision. Let me go back to Toronto and let me think about this. So I went back to Toronto, and um, I consulted one of my spiritual teachers, and her name is Olga, and she's a, she's a Buddhist monk. And she said to me, you're going to go back to zero. And I said, back to zero? What does that mean, back to zero? And um, I ended up walking down Young Street, and um, there, was, there was a sign that caught my eye. And it was red, and um, it was in the storefront window, and it said, Help Wanted. And uh, I looked at this sign, and I thought, hell, what is this? This looks fascinating. And I looked up above, and it was a sign for a French bakery. And the bakery's name was Le Petit Gourmet. And um, a light bulb just went off. It was like, do I go back to New York City and do I make a lot of money or do I go try my hand at baking and make minimum wage and try to do something that I've, that I've never thought of doing? Um, so it was at this point that I went into the bakery and I, I met the family that runs it. And uh, they're immigrants. This was one of the first bakeries on, um, on Young Street. It opened about over 30 years ago. And um, the father, his name is Christian. He's from France. And his wife, Linda, she's from the Philippines. And um, the entire family works at the bakery. And they are hardworking. And they are absolutely incredible people. And my job at the bakery was to open the shop. So every morning I would get there right as the sun was coming up and uh, there was bells on the door and I would go in, I would take all of the chairs down and wipe down the counters and um, I would get into the back of the kitchen and I would start making pastries. So there was pain au chocolat, there was Danish, there was raisin buns and you know it was... The experience itself, I mean, like lots of learning, obviously, but I had never been on that side of the counter, you know, and um, this to me, it started to make sense, like what this meant to really um, give back to your community and the type of feelings and the fulfillment that came along with feeding others, you know, and making that type of food. So, like, there was obviously, like, big moments of disaster of working at this bakery, um, <laughs> We would have this table of regulars that came in once a month, um, and they were lo like locals from the neighborhood, and there was 10 of them, and we had to do like a full-service breakfast, and it was just like very stressful. But there was other times um, when I would fill the dishwasher with hand soap, and um, the entire bakery went up in bubbles, and it was like a Cancun foam party. Like, it was a lot of fun, you know? So... So, um, so my, so the experience like in whole was like absolutely fulfilling. It was beautiful to be meeting people in my neighborhood and it taught me a lot about, you know, like the real principles of, of our like human nature, right? Like in compassion and in being gentle and being honest and genuinely caring about how someone's day was going and I found, like, for the first time in my life, really, like, I, I was able to whistle, like, while I worked. And I adopted a nickname, and they called me Joy at the bakery, you know? And I, I just, like, found a, a part of me that, that I didn't know existed, like, in learning about, about who I was. And um, 
And mostly just about the people in the area as well and having friends that would come over and whatnot. So um, towards the end of working at the bakery, I, um, I was asked by the owner, Linda, if I would go buy a lottery ticket and everyone would pool in their money. And, um, and um, you know, like with the light of winning this like $100 million jackpot. And um, I, I don't think there's anything that I wanted more than to see this bakery, you know, make their fortune off of, off of this lottery ticket um, because they work so hard and, and I really believe that they deserve a break and they need to retire and like go on vacation, you know? Um, but I guess like what the moral of this story is here is that, um, no, like we didn't win the lottery, right? Um, and definitely there was a lot of beautiful lessons, um, that really helped me to get back to zero, right? Like get back to zero. And that was learning all of that through the people in my community at the bakery. That's it. Thank you.